In an age when women were supposed to sit at home behind veils, one woman ruled her principality, commanded an army, and even came to the rescue of a besieged Mughal emperor. Hi, I'm Swapna Little, and I'm going to tell you the story of Begum Samru and her very interesting life and personality. The second half of the 18th century were troubled times for North India. Several different powers, the Mughals, the Marathas, the Jars, the Sikhs and several others fought among themselves for control over territories. This land of what seemed like perpetual war provided a great opportunity for European mercenary soldiers. They came to India to sell their expertise in warfare to whoever was willing to pay for their services. One of these mercenary soldiers was Walter Reinhardt, a German. He came to India around 1750 and served different powers one after the other, such as the British East India Company, the French, the Nawab of Awadh and the Jats. He eventually wound up in Delhi serving the Mughal forces. For these services, he was given the Jagir or Principality of Sardana, which is near Meerut. Reinhardt had a nickname, Somber, meaning dark, or some people also claim, glum or very serious which was corrupted to Samru by the Indians and this is the nickname by which he was known to Indians. When he was quite old, Reinhardt married a 15-year-old Kashmiri girl named Farzana and she began to be called Begum Samru, that is the wife of Samru. She soon showed that she was quite special because she took an interest in military matters, even accompanying the army into battle, though she watched from a slight distance. When Samru died in 1778, Farzana was not yet 30, but she took control of his Jagir and of his troops with the blessings of the Mughal Emperor. She served the Mughal Emperor loyally and when Shah Alam II was threatened in 1787 by the Rohila Ghulam Qadir, who entered the city and laid siege to the Red Fort, Begum Samru's forces prevented him from entering the fort and he was forced to leave the city also. The next year, when Begum Samru was not in Delhi, Ghulam Qadir returned and managed to not only occupy the Red Fort, but to blind the emperor and mistreat the members of his family. Once again, it was the troops of Begum Samru fighting beside those of the Maratha chief Sindhya, who came to Delhi and managed to dislodge Ghulam Qadir from his position and rescue the Mughal family. Begum Samru, because she was really a leader, and a leader with a lot of men below her, she never appeared obviously in a parda or a veil. And uh, unlike many other women for whom we do not have uh, actually realistic pictures, we have several portraits of uh, Begum Samru. And one of them is uh, really not a portrait, but a group picture with where she is shown in the center of her uh, all her troops, her generals, her important um, uh, officials and some guests also. And you see her sitting, she was a very small woman, uh, a diminutive figure sitting right in the center, smoking a hookah and flanked by these uh, Indians as well as Europeans. And you can see the kind of power that she wielded over them. A small little lady uh, and she was uh, a little bit older at that time, but surrounded uh, by these people who were paying homage in the sense to her uh, power and her influence. Begum Samru lived to a ripe old age of 86. When the British East India Company conquered Delhi, she pledged to serve them. She built a grand palace in Delhi and one in Sardana. She also built a church in Sardana since she had converted to Christianity sometime after her husband's death. Begum Samru's palace in Delhi is now known as Bhagirath Palace and is the hub of an electrical goods market. Her church in Sardana is a popular and revered pilgrimage site. They are also reminders to us of a woman who was intelligent, brave and showed initiative in fields where women were generally not allowed to venture.